Hello, you alright? Good. Swamp Hunter here. Right, I'm going to be playing or showing you the mighty quest for epic loot. Now this is on, it's a closed beta at the moment, um, so I do have access to that, uh, which I pay for, which and you can pay your way into that. Um, and that gives you, there's various different packages available, um, which I'll link to their website where you can buy that. Um, so in this game, you play as a castle keeper, I guess, and so you're trying to get all the treasure that you can from other people um, by attacking their castles and also from keeping your own castle safe by putting in protections. So as you can see, this is my castle, but I've deleted all the monsters. So I have all these different rooms. So I have five different rooms which I can move around as I'd like. So that I can put them wherever I want and make interesting or difficult paths for people to actually uh, fight their way through when they're trying to attack and uh, because you actually do you attack people's actual castle so you'll be attacking other players castles and they'll be attacking yours and trying to get your treasure so you have various different uh, various different objects around the place so you have your castle heart which you can which uh, so that upgrading that just uh, up allows you to access higher level buildings you also have the life force and gold. So those are the main two, well there's three currencies in the game in effect. So there's the life force which allows you to buy monsters and things like that. Then there's gold which allows you to upgrade other things such as items and potions and other things, equipment for your hero. And the third currency is an in-game currency and I will come back to that later as uh, I think that's quite an integral part of the game and that changes the experience in, in my personal opinion. Um, because obviously with anything that has an in any multiplayer game that has an inbuilt currency system that you can buy for real money that has the potential to unbalance the game meaning that if you're a new player who's not you know you're happy to pay for the game but you're not willing to spend money continuously on you know upkeeping your game or to buy the latest equipment but really pay to win I consider it only to be paid to win if you can pay for something that someone cannot earn Otherwise, you're paying for an advantage, but you're not paying to win. And in some cases, there might be cases where you don't have time to be able to play the game as much as you'd like or as much as someone else. So being able to buy your way back up, that can be valid. But really, it's that's the most important question for any game with an in-game currency. Is it pay to win? So I've got all these different rooms around, so I've, uh, I've set those out. I also have the other items I have as life force mines and gold mines which provide me with life force and gold then there's also the other things around your main castle ah so you have the architect's office this is where you buy new rooms and construct various different other items so I can construct gold mines but also I could buy other rooms at the moment my castle is five rooms so I could only actually add these to my inventory but see if I liked that room or like to this room that I could go, hey, I'd like to buy that. So that will go, apparently that, well, I can't place that, so that will go <laughs> somewhere else. Okay, so the next, um, next item, then you have Potion Brewery, where you can buy uh, potions of varying strengths, and these all go into your inventory. You also have, and I'll come onto the characters in a bit, but then you have your summoning portal and this is where it gets interesting because this is where you have all the different monsters that are available to you starting out from the lowliest derp to the mightiest what's the latest thing mr boom boom okay um yeah so you have all these different monsters that you can that you can hire and get into your into your castle of varying varying strengths and varying abilities there are also traps so these are things that you can set up and so that the enemy have to fight their way through them or um, yeah, or, or, or avoid. The next one is the research lab. Now this is where you make your, uh, your creatures stronger. So for example, there's the derps who have a certain level. So I've got those up to level five. But if I upgrade this creature here, so if I wanted to upgrade that, this it will show how much you'll get. So he'll effectively go up from level 10 to level 14, but his damage will go from 42 to 54, and his health will uh, go up again. So to 92, uh, I didn't really check it. Um, yeah, 
so then you have all these different creatures that you can upgrade and so you know I can see that this guy here he'd go from level 6 which is currently quite low up to a level 10 now that's that's worthwhile and it doubles his health so I'm, I'm going to upgrade that now so he's now then been upgraded and I could in fact upgrade him again and that would add another chunk of health onto him so I am going to upgrade him again so then bang we got a good uh, good amount there so I've still got 7,700 gold so I'm gonna see if there's something in my main area that I can upgrade so the next item is the blacksmith and this is where you get equipment for your actual chosen hero so all these different items can be bought so weapons armor and jewels which go into into the different slots here the next one is the hero trainer which is where you level up your hero and this costs gold so for example my hero is only level 14 so I could upgrade him to level 15 now and what that happens is so moving on to the heroes so they all have different powers and these are unlocked at different levels as shown on the uh, on the selection so then you have three different tabs but you put them into your into your bars so you have one you have your standard attack is left click then you have your next attack is the right click and then you have one two and three on the keyboard so those are all uh, all different attacks now there are some that are a little bit broken I mean healing strike I think this has been updated now but healing strike used to be absolutely broken for knights because they could just stand there and hit something small and just heal themselves up constantly so yeah it was uh, a little bit dodgy oh, zoomed in way too far now right the next item the last real item in the castle is the workers cabin now this can only be upgraded using real currency so there is no way to upgrade that using in-game currency so that is one way where pay to win could possibly creep in um, so this what this allows you to do is rather than at the moment if you have it at level one you can only upgrade one thing at a time so but if you have it at level two you can upgrade two things at a time and so on and so forth so that means that the more of those you have the more things you can have running at the same time and working at the same time but now so I'm going to look around but obviously at the moment as you can see my castle needs some fixing so I'm going to dip into my inventory and see what I've got that can increase uh, increase the difficulty for someone to come in and uh, take away all my gold so you have a protection limit which is how's that worked out? I can't remember again um, do you have a protection limit? What can they steal? Okay. I'm sure there's a. I'm sure there's a protection. Oh, I think they take a percentage of your gold, but then you get a healing shield for I think it's eight, eight hours. So if someone someone would take I think it's twenty percent of your gold, and then you'd have a you'd have a shield in place for the next time. So if I can fix my castle quickly, hopefully someone will attack me, and they'll be able to take my gold, and I can show you that. So you have all these different different items, but you also so in the around the castle you have various different combat zones. So going to here, so this is the entrance. So this is where someone comes into my castle. So I want that to be well defended. Now I'm not great at this game, in all honesty, um, <laughs> because I haven't really spent much time on it, and uh, I haven't really. There's a lot of very broken mechanics that I found when I played it first and they kind of they kind of put me off at the time but I do understand that a lot of them have been fixed for example people were able to chain enemies around and you couldn't uh, open because when you when you charge through uh, charge through the castle and are killing everything on the way once you reach the end gates and try and bash down the doors if there's an enemy still alive that you've activated even if you can't see him and he's not actually attacking you then you can't open the castle doors or open the vault doors now some people would be a bit tricky and say for example I could legitimately place him there that would widen that combat bubble round and I'd be able to put him there and then I could even stick someone here so it means that if someone goes that way they're unlikely to see that guy and so he would have been activated but there was, there's no chance for anyone to have seen him and that way people would be having um, you know people wouldn't be able to see him and thus I would they'd have to run back and there's a time limit so it would mean it's unlikely for them to uh, um, yeah to be able to actually get to my vault in time which is nice for me suddenly remembered shift for those that will probably get screaming shift at that point so here it is 
Okay, so I'm going to go for mainly melee damage at the start, but I'm also going, going to put in a bone puppeteer. Now what these do is is they heal. They heal your your monsters. So I'm going to put a couple of those in there, and I've got room for one more derp. So I'm going to stick that guy in there. Okay, now the next, the next boss I want to put in is I want something that's uh, that's able to take a few hits. So I'm going to put in a Dr. Skull. Now he is like a leveled up bone puppeteer. So he has three different specialities. Raising Hell means he'll raise all dead creatures in a large area. Medic, so he'll heal people. Or Rager Engager, enraging all creatures in a large area. So there's a lot of different tactics that you can employ to make your castle that little bit more tougher to, to attack and uh, tougher to defend. So, no, uh, sorry. Yeah, tougher to yeah, tougher to attack, not tougher to defend. Anyway, um, so I'm going to put this guy in, and I want him to have some big, big chunky mates around him. Um, in fact, no, I don't. No, I, I don't. I want him to have lots of small things around him. So I'm going to put you back in my inventory. Okay, then go back to my inventory. Stick this, stick these guys around. <laughs> Okay, and a few more ranged guys. Okay, so as you can see, there's defense points in certain areas, so I can't go over that limit. So I have to put in an amount that uh, that I think I have to put in the combat so that I know it's going to be a bit tough. So this guy, Pete Poundmore, he's a tough old, tough old guy, so I want him to be in a location where he's going to be tough to fight. And then I'm going to drop in a bone puppeteer and stick him there and just my last remaining derp just for the hell of it okay so he has different powers so he has offensive tackle floor punch and fists of rage and this guy I'm gonna have him as a medic so he's not going to be healing like the other ones so I'm assuming that doesn't change what I've got the other guys doing where are they okay so oh no it does change all of them okay so I want them to be raising hell instead okay so you also have these bosses. So as you can see, um, my castle defense rating 195 is the limit for my castle, and currently I've got 60, 60 in there. So I'm going to put a Robo Shieldatron, another big guy that's very tough to kill, and he has bodyguard. So he either shields the closest creature and regenerates when not hit, or producing a shielding aura or a shield wall. A wall. So I'm going to put him as having a shield wall. And then I'm going to stick a another. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to stick a cyclops in there. So I haven't stuck one of those in yet. So he's going to be. In fact, he can be a shield of protection. So he's going to be trying to shield. Uh, in fact, no, that one. So he's going to be shielding the cyclops, which will make him a bit tougher to uh, to kill. Okay, so I'm just going to stick a few random folk down. Okay, and move on to bosses. Now, bosses, they take, you have an area with 36 points. So you have various different boxes that you can put in. So you have, I've got this Terror Raptor, which is level 14, or I have a level 10 boss. I'm going to go with this guy, stick him in right at the end. Now, I have actually left some traps in there, in fact. So these traps uh, launch fire at people. Now, I'm just going to put in another combat around this area. And this can have 20 points, so then I've made that room a little bit tougher, and it means it's more likely for them to get hurt. I'm also going to stick another combat in here if I can. Okay, yep, I can do that. Okay, so that combat. Okay, so that's now that's now tougher. Put him here and a few smelly archers around. Okay, and I've got enough for a bone puppeteer as well. Then the last thing I've got is three defender trons. So I'm gonna stick those there so that someone goes up that way. But anyway, so I'm just kind of you know this isn't really any great tactical aplomb. I'm just putting these in just to show you what they're like. Okay, so then you have all these different traps. So I've got fire minefields. So these will explode and hurt people. So I want to put these around, and uh, I want to put one here so that it looks like it might be leading this way. Put a hamster wheel in here, and a couple of rotating cannons, just for the hell of it. 
and then glue mines. Now glue mines slow down your opponents when they're trying to get in. You can't put traps in other traps area of deployment. So I'm gonna to have to put those around. Okay, well anyway, that's so that anyway, that's the defensive side really done. And all those. Now with regard to the in-game currency, you have all these different options that you can you can get. So you can upgrade all the different items. Now research is always paid for by in-game current uh, sorry by by actual in-game currency that you can earn yourselves without paying real money the summoning portal does have some some uh, monsters which you can buy early for cash although I can't see in fact that might be they might have changed that which would make it less pay to win uh, yeah it looks like you can't you can't buy those, so it's all for in-game currency. So I don't know whether that's something they updated. The last time I checked it, it was very much on the cusp of being paid to win, and in fact had put me off playing. But they may have changed that, so it's more one to keep an eye on, you know, from your own perspective. Okay, so onto the actual characters. You have three different classes at the moment. You have all your inventory with uh, with all your items, and yeah, you can go on and attack people's castles. So. I'm going to attack uh, someone's castle, see how I get on, and go from there. Now, I could probably die. I haven't actually played this in a month, so we'll see how I get on. Okay. Okay, damn it. Blue mine straight off the bat. Okay, I don't even know if I'm going the right way. Okay, I've encountered some enemies. Okay, that's done done. Okay, I don't think that's the one. Okay, <laughs> I proved wrong within instance. Die. Die. <laughs> okay, that's the thing healing them death. It's always nice. Yeah. A bit of a tough old fight. Right, just trying to move out of the range of that other thing. Okay, so as you can see, they actually drop uh, resources that you can find in the game. Okay, so I've had to use a potion there to keep myself alive. But I just found uh, Pete's handkerchief, whatever that is. Okay, so now I've, I've reached their boss. So they've got a lot of uh, defensive characters around the place. Okay, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do on this one. Okay, I'm going to use the healing strike. See, so as you can see, combat does get a bit frenetic when you're uh, placing down quite a lot of enemies. That guy's healing him. I really should be taking him down. Okay. Now, in the top right corner, there is a time limit. So you can see how much longer you have until the end of the level. Or until their vault automatically locks down and you can no longer get any treasure for them. Okay. So I nearly got the boss dead. Die. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to set this guy off. I didn't want to set him off beforehand because I'd have had to fight him at the same time as the boss, but I can take him out afterwards with little to no trouble. Now I can leg it through the area. And, okay, so I made it just about in time there. So I get a portion of their gold. And that is that. So you get a little moment where you can rate their castle. So, there, I've rated their castle. And that's it. And really, that's all there is to the game. Um, unfortunately no one's actually attacked me so I can't see, show you the interesting bit where you can look at enemies who have tried to attack you so I haven't, I haven't logged in in quite a long time I don't know if it protects your account but yes, people weren't attacking me at that point so anyway, that's, um, that's the epic 
quest for the mighty quest for epic loot even and yeah so i mean check it out see what for yourself whether you think it's pay to win um i think it was in the past but i don't want i don't want to blindly say that yes it is or no it isn't because there's a lot of updates it's still in beta so there's a lot of changes that could still be made to the game that could either make it fairer or more unfair so really i far be it for me to judge a game before it's actually come out so you know there's a lot of balancing that they're gonna have and i'm sure that it's a balancing act that ubisoft are more than well aware of so thanks very much for watching check out the game if you'd like to and uh, cheers as always like if you like subscribe if you'd like to and um, thanks very much cheers bye